Today we're going to discuss run mode change. In the industry, they call that online editing. With other products that you may have used, now if you're a newbie to PLCs, industrial controllers, in general, then you don't know any other system. But with RS Logix, over the years, it's gone through some changes where you had to verify, accept, test, assemble. There were a lot of steps involved once you did an online edit. And when you were doing an online edit, it created edit zones with little E's, little R's, big E's, big R's, I's, all these different edit zones. And you could actually have more than one rung at a time in the edited mode. And basically, the way it works is, if you're online editing in the run mode, the process is still running. You're still making parts, assembling things, processing food chemicals, whatever your system's doing. So the controller has to be able to keep running and keep executing the program files, updating I.O., everything, while you're doing these edits. So in the previous systems, RS Logix type, which is good. I mean, the way they're doing it is good and actually is a little, seems a little bit more straightforward. But we'll just say that they're equal but different. Well, with RS Logix, you put a rung into the edit mode. So it's still running that rung as is. Then you edit a copy of the rung. Okay? In other words, when you put it in the edit mode, you see two rungs that look identical. One's running and the other one is an edit zone. So you edit that rung, but that rung's not being used. Once you get done editing that rung, you have to go through some acceptance steps to check for syntax errors and whatever else. Then you go into the test mode. So you've got two rungs. You got the one that's being run and then you've got another one that you're editing. When you go in the test mode, it does this. Now it's running the one that you've edited, and if you decide, oh, I don't like that, you click untest and it goes back, okay? But let's say that you test it, you like the way it works, then you finalize it by whatever steps they provide. So with uh, the Micro 800 with Connected Components Workbench, it's still relatively similar, but it seems a little bit more clumsy or awkward. However, that's if you're an RS Logix user, you're going to find it a little kludgy to begin with until you get used to the terminology and what to click on up in the menu. So whether you are an RS Logix user or the user of another brand of controllers, another platform, or you're brand new, Take your time with this lab project. You may want to do it over a couple times until you're real comfortable with what's going on. Who's on first? Who's on second? Who's on third? Who just landed on home base? I'm telling you, <laughs> if, if you go out on the shop floor and you're trying to make a process improvement and you booger it up and shut the machine down, shut the process down, then all of the, the, the preceding stations that feed into your station, they're now shut down. And all the ones downstream for your station, they're now starved for whatever your work cell was producing. So make sure that you got this online editing thing, which is mode, run mode change. Make sure you got it down pat before you leave this lab project and go to the next one. So let's do it. Part of this lab project is discussing the issue between the Micro 810 and the other controllers of the family. What you see in front of you here is two instances of CCW opened. This one is with a Micro 810 and this one is a Micro 820. If I go to the controller, right click and go change controller, I can change the Micro 820 over to any number of other, see, LC30, LC50, LC70. 
However, if I go to the Micro 810, you see that there is no change controller because the Micro 810 stands by itself. There is no upward path. There's no portability directly from anything you do in a Micro 810 to another controller. So what we're going to do here is show you how to copy, paste everything from a Micro 810 project into another Micro 800, such as a 20, 30, 50, or 70. In this case, I'm going to use the 820. Let's begin by copying programs from one controller to the other. One thing I will share with you, copying a program does not copy necessarily the variable. So let's look in local variables here and you see there aren't any. There are in the sequence and there aren't any in the buffered output. So let's go back. Let's right click on buffer inputs. Go over to our 820, right click and paste. Now let's go to sequence, right click, copy, programs, right click, paste. Let's go to buffer outputs, right click, copy, right click, paste. If we go to sequence and open it up, you'll see that the tags, especially the controller tags, have warnings. They're not actually tags yet. They're just names placed on some instructions. So let's go back to, first of all, the local variables. We'll open up this one and you can see that the local variables came with it. So let's go to the global variables in the 810 and go to the global variables in the 820. We'll scroll all the way down to our empty field down here. Now we're going to go to the variables in the 810 and we're going to drag our cursor through this entire group. Control C, go over here to the empty field, paste. See now we've copied all of the variables from the global variables in the Micro 810 project to the global variables in the Micro 820 project. So to double check, let's go to the buffer inputs. And of course we couldn't see everything because we had it collapsed. In other words, we can't see the full run. We'll just scroll over and down and you can see that we have no warnings. Let's go to buffered outputs and look at the same thing. Now there's only four rungs because the Micro 810 only has four outputs. Go to sequence and now you see that there are no warnings. So effectively we've transferred the entire valuable content from the 810 over to the 820. Now in our case, since we're working with a simulator, we can't actually test it. But just keep this in mind, if you're going to go from an 810 to an 820, 30, 50, or 70, you're going to have to copy and paste everything from the 810 to the 820. I'm going to cheat. I'm going to go to the Micro 820, change controller. This popped in on the other screen, so I'm going to drop down and pick the 850 sim. Okay. Now just for grins, I'm going to save it. Even though it says 820, I think I'll save as and change that to 850 sim. Then download it. Now I don't have a connection path, so I have to do that first. And I have to start the simulator, powered up. And remember, the simulator still has the program in it that we had with the timers. Turn on input zero. See, there's your done bits and your timer timing bits, and then they all go out together. So that program's still in the simulator from our last lab project. So what we're going to do is we're going to download location we've not used before. I've always had you do it from another location. So we're going to do it from the controller page the Micro 850 page. We select download. Now I'm going to stretch this out so we can see the logic. Now this logic came from this Micro 810 project over here. So let's try operating input zero. You can see and it works. 
Okay, that's how you transfer everything from an 810 over to any of the other controllers. Now, I did it to an 820, but I gave you a bonus here. I went in and changed the 820 to an 850 sim. Let's close down this project. We're going to stop the simulator. We're going to save and close down. In the second part of this lab project, we introduced you to run mode change, which is online editing. Now in the manual, we used IN00 and OUT00 for our memory locations for these instructions. We're changing it up a bit. It really doesn't matter. The process for doing an online edit is the same. Select run mode change. We need to stretch this out a little bit so we can see the entire menu. We'll just drop this down here and make it the full width. So we click on run mode change and that looks like we're offline. We add in another instruction. In other words, we're editing online and we'll make this one digital input or one digital input one. At this point, we can test the changes or we can cancel the changes. So let's test the changes. And it should return to the ladder logic automatically when it's done doing the build and the setup. So we test the changes, turn on input zero, turn on input one and output zero goes on and off. So we're happy with our changes. We look at our choices again. We are in test. We can accept the changes or again we can cancel. So let's accept the changes and there we are. All done. That's how easy online edits are. In the manual we had several questions. The first one was before we were going to test said mouse over these two choices that are now active. These two options became active because you clicked on run mode change. Your changes outside the running program, CCW likes the syntax, so what is the next step? What are your choices and what do they imply? Your choices are to test or cancel. If you choose test, then it's going to allow you to test your logic live running with your process if you pick cancel edits or discard unaccepted changes, cancel edits, same thing. If you click on that, then it's going to eliminate any changes that you made. Then it says select the one to continue and watch closely. Then mouse over the new choices. Notice that one of them is included with the run mode change button. Which one and why? We'll go back to run mode change. Now notice that the, this button right here did not become active, nor this one, until you actually made a change. And this one is the test changes. So they are in order of operation, meaning this one tests, this one accepts, and this one cancels. So we tested our logic. Does the edit function as expected? Yes. What are your three choices? Untest. we we'll go up here and, and test changes. If we click on this one, then we're back to our edits. So notice that, go, that changes a little bit. The test change button goes from not testing to testing. If I click on it, see the little symbol up there? If you look real close, if I click on that, watch it change when it goes back to the edit mode. See, it changes color. So we go back to test, and once we're in test, then we can accept or cancel. It's that simple. Okay, this was not a real long lab project, but it's an extremely important one. Because remember that run mode change is not about programming. It's about exercise of your tools. Online editing is extremely important. As a matter of fact, there are some controllers that don't support online editing, like the MicroLogix 1000 did not, nor the 1200 or 1500. But the MicroLogix 1100 and 1400 both supported online editing and Ethernet. 
And for that reason, the 1,000, 1,200, and 1,500 have pretty much disappeared, but you still have 1,100 hanging in there and definitely 1,400s, okay? That's nothing to do with micro 800. But run mode change is extremely important. Make sure that you don't go on unless you understand this. Now, you can go finish the rest of the course and never use run mode change. You can do all your changes offline. In other words, you can save and disconnect. Now, with other software like RSLogix, it's offline, online. Okay? If you want to go online, you go online. With Micro 800, you connect. So, connecting and going online is synonymous between RSLogix and CCW. Disconnecting and going offline is synonymous with Connecting Components Workbench and RSLogix. So, Make sure you have that all straight before you go on to the next project.